Hi, my name is uh, Guido. Um, I'm a digital coach for several projects um, of CBI in uh, Nepal, Myanmar, uh, now also in Zambia. And in the summer, I was inspired by a forecasting model that was used by the, um, by the DMO of Switzerland. And it tried to forecast recovery after COVID-19. So I started thinking, how could I do that for the companies that I work with? And based on that thinking, I developed this dashboard, um, which shows um, what people in Europe are currently searching. Um, so um, let me guide you um, and see what the dashboard is all about. So we're going to start to explain what the dashboard all is about by um, exploring the first link from the article. And the first link in the article goes to the Google Trends dashboard of Airbnb. So what we see here is the number of searches relatively um, compared to the last five years that people searched in Google on the keyword Airbnb. Um, so there are two main dashboards. One is searches of the last year. That's the dashboard we see here. The other is searches for the last 19 days to get a little bit better overview how the recovery or the demand is doing in the last three months. So what we see here is nine key markets that we selected. Um, France, United Kingdom, Germany, Italy, Spain, Switzerland, Netherlands, Poland, and Sweden. And what you can do here is quickly see the different trends in the different countries. And actually, they're quite similar. So what I tried to do is focusing on three main demand categories and I thought that the main categories are just like how tourism phases or recovering phases are unfolding in most countries. Domestic travel starts first, then regional travel and the last one to recover is probably long haul. And in this dashboard I want to show you which countries um, uh, which parts in which countries recover first. Now, so here we see the trends of Airbnb. And we saw that in most of the countries, the summer domestic was recovered um, very well. And if the line here hits the top line, that's 100%, it means that demand at that week was the highest in the last five years. So these are not absolute numbers, but it's relative. So in the United Kingdom, in the last five years here, and this is the date of 19 July, there were never that many people searching for Airbnb in the United Kingdom. Meaning that the recovery of domestic tourism in the UK was doing pretty well in the summer. Yeah, maybe even more people stayed um, domestic normally in the UK than they ever have done. We see something similar in Switzerland. So that's the way how to look at these numbers. So Airbnb hotels are both indicators for me for domestic travel. However, flights is a first indicator for regional travel, or maybe even long haul travel. And what you see then also is that flights recovered slower than Airbnb. So it takes some time to download. And we saw also in the other one that Poland didn't recover um, or didn't show. And that, that's not a big problem. You can just hit the refresh button and then you will see better. So here we see the recovery of flights in Italy. So really sharply went down after COVID-19 
and then it recovered as well as in Spain. You see that in a country like the Netherlands, it recovered, but not as much as in Italy and in Spain. So apparently Dutch people are a little bit more careful with already thinking of flying than they were in Italy and Spain. So remember those two countries, Italy and Spain. Um, another part that I looked at is Okay, we, people really go, they're probably going to search for travel insurances. So if the travel insurance searches go up, I assume people really have intent, really the idea of starting to travel. And if people are really closely at their homes, they're probably not going to take a travel insurance. But maybe if they go a few hundred kilometers away, then I already start thinking about taking an insurance. And definitely if they go further. Now further I thought about, okay, what kind of holiday types are recovering faster? For example, beach holidays. And beach holidays was really popular in Europe during the summer. And so we see big spikes and we see that the United Kingdom and France even had five year, all time, no, five year heights. So a big recovery for beach holidays in the summer. So uh, beach holidays close by, but also in other destinations could still be a hit for maybe the spring season if it goes open or the summer times. What we also saw was that a lot of people booked last minute. So it takes Again, a little bit of time to recover, but you see here um, big spikes in Italy, for example, and big spikes in Germany. What's also interesting is okay, family holidays, is that there's really a difference in the different countries of how people um, looked at family holidays. So we see that the United Kingdom saw a slow peak. Germany was already a higher peak. Um, well, let's see if we can see them. It goes a little bit slow, but you see, for example, Sweden or Switzerland don't see that much family holiday peaks. But if you're looking here at Italy, for example, where family is much more important, and apparently in France also, you see significant peaks. Um, for family travel after uh, COVID-19. So that was in those countries, something that really resonated fast, something that maybe you could take away for next season that um, people are coming to your destination. And then I was thinking for the last part, okay, long hill destinations. And I took for that uh, Bali and um, Cairo as an African destination. And what we see is that we have seen some recovery in some countries and what quite remarkable are um, Asian um, countries that were doing still pretty good or Asian, Asian loving countries in the summer. And it's a for example, not that much, but you see uh, a slight peak in the summer in, in Italy and a big peak in, in Spain, um, which is quite, quite remarkable. Um, but most countries stay very low, right? So the intent to travel far never picked up during the summer and even um, until this moment, the second week of December. Yeah, well, normally uh, Bali, I, th I think it's about to open, of course, is um, getting into peak season. I'm saying it's for flight gear, so you can look at that yourself. Um, G Adventures I used because I thought, okay, if people start to book with a tour operator, um, they really want to go and have first year going to search for destinations or other, other ways. Um, and then you also see the tour operators, the recovery in most countries has been slow. So this is the way 
how you can use your dashboard for um, the whole overview with the types. And you can also look in depth to a country. And we, I did exactly the same. I followed that pattern of domestic travel, regional travel, and then overseas. So the first page is more, okay, is tr domestic travel demand uh, going up? And are people thinking about going abroad? which I think is represented very nicely by visa, for example, but in some countries also with travel um, insurances and definitely also with, with flights. Um, so where you see that Airbnb and hotels went up really well, we're in Sweden here, you see that flights and visas um, stayed quite low. Now, the second sheet is the recovery per holiday type. We discussed this also in the other dashboard. So you can just have a look, okay, what counts for me? What is interesting for my target market to know? Now we go to um, popular flight oh. destinations. And those flight destinations are flight destinations that I took are close to Europe, like Tenerife, for example, or um, popular in Asia. And for that, I took Bali. And then you see that Bali um, doesn't have that much recovery yet here from Sweden, nor does Tenerife. So flying for Swedish people is still a little bit um, they're not very comfortable. Then I have destinations that are in the CBI program at the moment. So at the moment is the second week of December 2020. Um, what you see here is that um, the, 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 the countries don't have a lot of volume. And because they don't have a lot of volume, they, um, yeah, they don't have enough um, data from Google Trends. So Myanmar, for example, I don't have any data, but for Bangkok, I have, and you see Bangkok is still super low. Um, and travel in Jordan, I also don't have a lot of data, but it at least does something. And what you could think of, or at least that's my conclusion, so, and maybe you have other thoughts of it, is that most um, adventurous, little bit difficult destinations, and when you're in a developing country, your country is not an easy destination to go to, um, didn't have a lot of traffic yet, but the people searching for it during COVID-19 actually stayed pretty stable. So when people feel confident again to fly, then maybe these um, adventurous destinations could recover to roughly the same numbers um, faster than other de destinations. Um, however, we also see that a lot of people love to go to the same destination destinations they know so if i've always went to to for example friends i want to go again to friends however those small amounts of people that for example already came to uganda they might be staying the same i'm sure that that's how i inter um interpret it um and in the last, uh, we already showed also from the others, is the G Adventures, and I compared it with Interpret. We're not all countries have that same uh, 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 demand for Interpret and G Adventures, 
because uh, they're not that popular in all the countries. So G Adventures and Interpret are mostly popular in the UK. Um, let's take some time to, to load this. Yeah, here it's coming. So G Adventure is giving some um, demand in Sweden, but the Interpret, for example, not at all. Now, if we go to Ethiopia, for example, um, Alice Baba, what you could do if you're going to add it, and this is something that you will learn in the other videos, is that you could play with the with the data. So if I'm here looking at Ethiopia, I have here travel Ethiopia, which is um, quite a phrase, but of course I could just make this Ethiopian. And this is, you, you need to understand this. This is in Sweden's lang language, so Ethiopian. This is how you write it. So, but note that I removed the word travel and I just went for it for Ethiopian. So these are the number of searches that people did from Sweden for Ethiopian. And sometimes that gives also a reflection of demand. So here you see it was actually quite stable until the problems in Ethiopia started. And apparently a lot of people are following the news and that will lead to new inquiries in Ethiopia. So if we look at um, others, so also note that others is written differently in Sweden, um, but others, for example. Then we see that um, this um, more, 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 more detail. But then you see that the demand, or is it demand at least the searches for others above, stay relatively relatively the same. So that's what I try to say with Africa. Um, if you're a little bit challenging destination, the number of people searching for your destination might not have such a big nose dive as in other countries. Of course, people don't come there because of all kinds of constraints during travel. But if those constraints are gone, then maybe those people will um, go back at the same amounts as that have been before COVID-19. So um, what's the other videos where I will learn you how to get into the system and where you can quickly edit a search and then you can play with the searches. So if you don't have data for travel Ethiopia, you could reduce that to, for example, Ethiopia, or you could reduce it to only a city or of the city in this case.